And then we read from the books. The books are fantastic. They're all handwritten. And it gives you all the weights and measures of different kings as you go back to them. Because when you had weights and measures done, they were done by the, to the end of his finger. So as the king changed and died, then you sometimes have to re-measure your distances. Of course, when we had decimalization came in, and then uh, we had to use imperial, get rid of the imperial, and we had to go to metric. Even that is put down in the book and the breakdown of what the weights will be. So that's what we do. We have uh, characters which are called, um, uh, there's a man that will drive the pigs, you have a man that drives the cows, you have a special constable, bellman, you have sc uh, scrivengers, you have the ale tasters. Now, to be an ale taster, you've got to like beer. And there's a few of them that like beer. So it's always a very good position to have. And I will take the ale tasters around the old part of town. I'll ring my bell and knock on the door and demand that we come in and taste the ale. And we taste all the ale in the establishment, establishments here. I started thinking I'm drinking already. But I'm a cider man. And that's what we had to do. Because what they used to do was to like water it down a little bit. A bit of this and that. And if it wasn't up to scratch, then you were put in front of the poor tree and things were dealt with. But it all changed within about 80, in the 1800s. But um, yeah, it's all good fun. It's all good fun. Do you have any power at all, actually? Uh, technically, no. No. It all went in the 1800s when it was the beginning of the district and town councils. You know, they had to let go. But it was usually the gentry of the town and the farmers, all the farmers of the uh, farms around, like Kentsford Farm, Bar Snage, and you go over to. A Grove and Orchard Windham and what's the other one over the top there? Can't think of it. It's gone. Near Captain, when they were all the farms of the estate. But it, it's the old story. Money married money. So the the Windhams were married to the Egremonts, to the Thedes, to the Bolses, to the Kings. So land and money always went to those families. Yes, madam. Can I join you? I don't know if yes, you're starting or finish. If you're just about to I'm finish. only about a fifth of the way oh, through. We haven't right. made it. We've only just made it off the Esplanade, haven't we? Yeah. Well, God, no, right. Dave, I'm happy to join okay. you. Okay. Now, you all right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All I, I should have told you about the uneven ground. Well, we've just covered it, so we're all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've come this way. The Bell Inn. There is a legend in the Bell Inn that a lady gave birth, I think, to twins, and they didn't, uh, they were stillborn. So to get rid of them, because I think the lady was not supposed to be pregnant, they buried them in the chimney breast. Yes. Right. We we'll move this way. Here we're coming to an old part of town now, Market Street. At one time in Market Street, there was over 14 different establishments that you could get wallet. So, not quite a little change. You've got the London, you've got Pebbles Tavern, you've got the Bell, you've got the Star. So you could get Wallop and watch it a fair bit. At one time, there was 27 establishments. But uh, old uh, the man, William Wooth Booth of the Salvation Army, he thought, watch is a bit of a place to have a thirst, but not drinking quite the right stuff. So he bought some of the establishments and turned them into dwellings. So then the pubs dropped down. But it's, uh, it's always been a bit of a drinking tank. A bit like Bridgewater, really. So. Uh, <laughs> what, there's some people from Bridgewater here? They used to, well, Bridgewater's a big tank of drink, isn't it? Now, this area here, that used to be the ship. And at one time, beyond the back, it was called the Black Boy. But also, at one time, it was Yankee Jack's Net House. And another time, that was the Slaughter House. And this is the Butchery. So, uh, the buildings have been used for many things. Well, that gap there, the road of these cottages carried on. And they knocked it down, and I knew what they were going to work with. Hang on, we'll go this way. Sorry, girls. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's quite no problem. Sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. Thank you. We come in for Kate. On my way there, good boy. Hello, Michael, Rachel. Hi. So, they knocked down the cottages, and it was all allotments back there, and they opened it up to try and create some parking and watch it. Uh, they're real ale in the town, and the beer and the side is very good. Uh, different establishments have all won uh, lots of awards. The Bells won awards, Esplanade Club, the Star, and the new kind of cover on the block, Pebbles Tavern. That's won the Cider Pub of the Year for the last two years. 
Uh, and it's got to the national finals. So that's where you go then. That's where I drink. Yeah, I'm a cider man. I am. It's the best place for cider. But I'm biased. <laughs> History. A lot of captains, when they retired, bought pubs. And I think Captain Chigi had this one. There was a captain one time who had the misfortune of running into the witch that lived in, not Lady Morrow. Right, and we're going to. I just say the right things at the wrong time. <laughs> right, here we go. We're going into an alleyway here. And this is taking us out onto the West Quay. Now, this is colloquially known as Sammy Yates Cottage. I'm not sure there was ever a man called Sammy Yates that lived in it, but this building here, very unusual. Kind of an extension, an extension, an extension. There's an alleyway, that door is there, there's an alleyway to service the part of the other cottages in Market Street. But this bit here, up to about three years ago, was solid. There was no floor. It was just completely a solid, it was alleged to be a huge rock in there. But friends of mine bought the establishment and decided, well, we need a little bit more of it because it's not the biggest of places. This is the front door. This is, is the front door and uh, I gave them a little bit of a hand and they dug it out and what they found in there was a lot of shingle and shale and slate and they did believe that it was left over from the great storm of the, eight, of the late 1800, 1900s that demolished the king here and what they did, probably get rid of some of the rubbish, they backfilled it in there and that's where it is but they've now got another room and they've got the wood burner down there and it's, it's lovely, it's really cosy and this is Sammy Hake's cottage. Sammy Hake's cottage was used by the hobblers. And the hobblers, before you had registered pilots, you had the men of the town or the docks that knew their way through in and out of the harbour, know the tides, and sandbanks and the mud flats, what to do. So there used to be a race to row out to the ships to bring them in. And if they brought the ships in, they'd get the shillings to be paid as pilots. And uh, I'm afraid there used to be a little bit of a doodah. And there was always fighting. And they ended up, you know, knocking seven buckets of mud out of each other. And so what they did, let's put our heads together, let's share the spoils, and they formed the Hobblers Association. And they used to run out of this building. There's a lookout tower there. There's another lookout tower on the end of Yankee Jack's house. And there was a lookout tower on the bank house at the top of Swing Street. But it only came across about, well, um, three or four years ago when they were decorating it. So I'll get and talk to that when we get there. But this is it. There used to be a siren on top of it. 